This intro is gonna be longer than what I normally do because I wanna make sure that I sell exactly what this video is about and how important this stuff is in helping you become a better player. Think for a moment, what is the most important factor in tennis when it comes to being a great tennis player? You'll probably say something like consistency or footwork or technique. However, there's something much more important than all of those things, something that you must be good at in order to have good footwork or technique or any of that other stuff. And that is being able to read the incoming ball very early. That means being able to see the incoming ball's speed, height, direction, depth, and spin. Misjudging the ball is certainly one of the most common problems in tennis, aside from advanced players. Oh, and did I mention it's only the most important part of tennis? Hi, I'm Jeremy Mulfay with Fundamental Tennis. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed this video. This is certainly one of my most passionate subjects to talk about because I know how many people struggle with this and how much it prevents you from reaching the next level. You see, if you misjudge the ball or you read it late, then there's gonna be a domino effect of problems. You're gonna to arrive to the ball late, your footwork will be off, and your balance will be poor. The worst part is, it's not talked about near enough. I don't think people realize how important this is. It may not be as sexy as talking about technique, however, if you read the ball late, then you won't be in position to have that perfect swing anyway. Imagine if you could find the ball two seconds earlier each time you receive it, simply because you could read the ball earlier. Imagine how much that would help your footwork, your anticipation, and much more. I'm about to give you tips and drills to help you work on reading the ball better. These drills will also help you to get in the zone and make it feel like the ball is coming to you in slow motion. These drills will also help you to relax and decrease anxiety and overthinking. If you wanna improve your game, then you need to receive the ball better. So in this first drill, I'm working on reading the height of the ball. You can do this in a rally sequence or you can have somebody feed the ball to you. You could also use the wall or set the ball machine on random. So I'm simply calling out the height of the ball every time I receive the ball. So for example, right here, I would call high and then I would get in position to hit the ball. Next ball, I would call high again. I get in position to hit the ball. And this ball is a low ball, so I would call out low. So you're either going to say low, medium, or high, and the sooner you call it, the better, as this means you read the ball early. Now just to give you an idea of how to identify the height of the ball you're receiving, a low ball would be about three racket lengths or lower over the net, a medium ball would be about 10 to 20 feet over, and a high ball will be about 25 plus feet over the net. Now some common mistakes I see when players do this drill is people will say the wrong height or change their mind or they will say it too late or they completely forget to say anything. It's obvious that when players make a mistake like say the wrong buzzword or say it late, they are not in position and off balance whereas when they say the correct buzzword and say it early, they are in position with time to spare because they read the ball early. Here is another very simple to understand drill but not as easy to execute as many people think. Now that we've worked on reading the height of the ball, we're going to now take a look at reading the speed of the ball. So the three buzzwords are fast, medium, and slow. For example, if we take a look at this next shot I'm receiving, I would say medium, and this ball I would say medium as well. This does depend a little bit on your level, that ball I would say fast, this ball I would say fast as well, so you say the buzzword as early as possible. This one I would definitely say slow, of course I missed the easy one, this one I say slow, there we go. So again, you say fast, medium, or slow, and you simply call that out as early as possible each time you receive the ball. Any of these drills you can of course call 
the buzzword out loud or you can say it to yourself. It's important that you do the previous two drills I just showed you before doing this drill as this drill is going to give you the awareness of how well you can read the incoming ball's height and speed. In this drill you're simply going to call out either up, back, or stay. The word you call out each time you receive the ball represents your movement. So for example if we look at me here I would call out up as soon as possible and here I would call stay and here I would call stay again and this one I would call up and this one I would call stay so if I move left or right but not up or back then that's a stay this one I would call back This drill you want to do as the first or the last drill of the bunch. The way it works is you say the number one when the ball is on the strings of the opponent's racket. You say the number two when the ball bounces on your side of the net. And you say hit when you hit it. When doing this drill you want to make sure that you say the two numbers and the word at the exact same time that it happens. Meaning, for example, if we look at this next sequence, I'm going to say one, two at the bounce, hit at the hit. One at the opponent's hit, two at the bounce, hit when I hit. One, two, hit. One, two, hit. The issue would be if I went like this. One, two, hit. Or maybe one, two, hit. See I said it too late, sometimes I said it too early. You want to say it at the exact time that it happens. That shows that you're reading the ball well and you're really seeing the ball. This time we're going to have three numbers and the word hit. So you're going to say one again as the opponent makes contact and this time you're going to say two as the ball travels over the net and then when the ball bounces you say the number three and you of course say hit when you hit. One, two, three, hit. If you are having trouble with any of these drills, I recommend you do an easier progression prior to the drill. For example, if you wanted to work on the height drill where you call out low, medium, high, Prior to hitting the ball and having a racket in your hand, you're first going to catch the ball after the bounce, and you'll of course still say low, medium, high. If you're doing the speed or call out the speed drill where you say slow, medium, or fast instead of using a racket, you're going to catch the ball after the bounce and call out slow, medium, or fast as soon as possible. And if we do the depth drill where you call out up, back, stay, instead of using a racket, once again, you're going to catch the ball instead. Now when it comes to the numbers and the word hit drill, you're going to still call out one, two, hit, or you could do one, two, three, hit, and you're going to catch the ball instead of use the racket. So once again, for all of these drills, you can catch the ball instead of using your racket. It will allow you to not overthink it will allow it to it will allow you to get used to the drill and figure it out and uh, make it a bit easier prior to using the racket and doing the same thing tennis is the ultimate eye hand coordination sport if you want to improve your footwork or getting in position to hit the ball then you must read the ball better and earlier your footwork will improve naturally if you can find the ball sooner the first step to the ball is not physical it's actually mental. You simply cannot have good footwork if you read the ball late. For example, if I see I'm receiving a short ball and I think it's only two steps away, I will likely shuffle, when in fact it's much further than I realize, and this shuffle will not get me to the ball in time. Had I known it was farther away, I would have ran to the ball 
Misjudging the ball is like reading a paragraph from a book while your mind was elsewhere, and after you read the paragraph, you're like, I don't know what I just read. The first step in the cycle of receiving the ball is reading where it's going. You cannot think about footwork or where or how you want to hit the ball. You cannot anticipate the opponent's next move until you have identified the incoming ball's characteristics. It's simple. The earlier you read the ball, the earlier you will start moving to it. The later you read the ball, the later you will start moving to it. Reading the ball well will improve anticipation consistency, shot selection, mental toughness, the quality of your shot, your technique, your balance, it'll help you with everything. It's incredible how undervalued the subject is, just like working out strengthens your muscles. With practice and quality drills, you can strengthen your eyes and how early you can pick up the incoming ball. Imagine that when you play tennis, it's pitch black until the ball is near the bounce on your side of the court. This is essentially what happens with millions of tennis players around the world. You will, of course, read the ball late and react late. Many players and coaches mistakenly blame poor positioning on their footwork when, in fact, it's ball reading that is the problem. Nobody is purposely not in position when they hit it, right? Especially every time you are not in position to hit the ball, it is from misjudging the ball. This poor footwork is a symptom of misjudging the ball. Once again, trying to fix footwork won't do any good. What you need to improve is your eyes. A great example of misjudging the ball is when somebody puts a lot of backspin or side spin. This is a common problem. Uh, many players won't know exactly where that ball is going. And what will happen? They will be reaching, lunging, off balance, poor footwork, all a domino effect from reading the ball late. Oftentimes, I do not even work much on technique, even if a player has poor stroke fundamentals, because if they cannot get in position to hit the ball, then they, that must be the main priority to work on. Focusing on technique will really distract you from focusing on the ball, and this will lead to very slow improvement. There are three parts to tennis, sending, receiving, and recovering. The most important part of tennis by far is receiving the ball, so let's stop focusing only on sending the ball. We've all been told to watch the ball. Now you know exactly what that means and you know how to practice it. Remember, what we covered in this video is the most important part of tennis, and if you get this right, everything else becomes so much easier. Again, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on my weekly videos. And if you can think of anyone who can maybe find value in watching this video, please share it with them. Until next time, good luck with your game.